Hello everyone, welcome to Edusoft. So today we are going to start our new series that is on cyber ethics. So before starting on this cyber ethics, I want to tell you this, we have already completed our full playlist on common Python libraries, web development, app development, and MIT app inventor. Link of all the playlists is given in our description box. You can go through it and watch the full playlist. Now in this series, what we are going to focus on. This series, we are going to focus on e-commerce and cyber ethics, intellectual property rights, digital property, open source software, and various open source license. So we are in a constant touch with this cyber space through our computers and smartphones. It has exposure to all kinds of people, kids, grown-ups, people with good intentions, as well as people with malicious intentions, people from different communities, beliefs, and working profile. Let us look into cyber ethics first. What is cyber ethics? Cyber ethics refers to the fundamental rules and values which governs us to make right use of cyberspace. Cyber ethics governs our ethical conduct while interacting over cyberspace. तो साइबर एथिक्स क्या होता है जब आप साइबर स्पेस में काम करते हो तो उसके लिए कुछ फंडामेंटल रूल्स एंड वैल्यूज होती हैं जिससे हम साइबर स्पेस का राइट right यूज कर सकते हैं उसको हम क्या बोलते हैं साइबर एथिक्स बोलते हैं इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर आर एथिकल कंडक्ट वाइल इंटरेक्टिंग ओवर साइबर स्पेस साइबर एथिक्स ब्रॉडली कवर्स Respecting privacy of others in respect of personal data and in terms of identity. Avoid digital piracy. Compliance to cyber laws as defined by government. Value-based dealing in all transactions. Respecting intellectual property rights and digital property rights. Now, coming to next one, that is e-commerce and cyber ethics. So e-commerce, as we already know, involves commercial transactions and related activities in cyberspace. This all become more important because in cyber world, customer, service providers, and other stakeholders, they do not know each other. They do not meet with each other. So coming to this one, like uh, online shopping stores, net banking, online portals of non-banking financial organizations, Financial mobile apps are all the part of e-commerce. Certain code of ethics ensures that these transactions occur in most secured way and maintaining the privacy of these transactions. So while working on cyber space or we can say while working on e-commerce, we have to maintain certain code of ethics that ensures the secured way of transactions and the privacy of these transactions. Now, what are the major concerns in e-commerce and cyber ethics? Number one, safeguarding privacy. And number second is fraud prevention by secured transaction. Now, coming to first one, that is safeguarding privacy. Limiting and preventing access to anyone's personal, financial, and other transaction details by unauthorized agency is a prime focus for maintaining the privacy. Here, we have come through this term that is right to anonymity. What is meant by right to anonymity? It is the individual rights to be protected from undesired attention. And what do we mean by undesired attention here? Undesired attention like unwanted notifications, unwanted mails, unwanted calls and messages. So right to anonymity plays a very important role in cyber ethics and cyber crimes. It is the individual right to be protected from undesired attention. Coming to next one, that is privacy policy should include the following. So how we can maintain this code of conducts or we can say the code of ethics that ensures the privacy of all the stakeholders that are working in cyberspace. Some of the policies are number one, description of policies and terms and conditions. Types of information website collects from other security and privacy practices. So, all the website working in a cyber space 
should ensure the full description of all the policies, terms and conditions. All the terms and conditions should be clearly visible on the website of for all the transactions. Number second, type of information website collects from the others. It should maintain and it should make available all the type of information that it will be going to collect from the users. Number third is security and privacy practices. Now, so coming to how we can manage or how we can say we can deal with cyber ethics. Website should ensure that customer have gone through all the privacy policy documents and all the other terms and conditions. They should ensure putting up suitable industry standard measures to protect user data. Strong measures through technology such as data inscription with secure socket layer that is SSL with HTTP, firewalls and antiviruses and regular updates in security measures. Other than this, we can also do what we can also do. We can also constant monitor to identify the possible threats. So all these measures should be taken for safeguarding the privacy while we are working in cyberspace. Coming to next slide, that is for the question and answers. So from this series onward, we are going to start this question and answers part at the end of each session. So number first question is, what is cyber ethics? Which broader aspects does it cover? Try to answer this question at your home. The second question is about the fill in the blanks. Number one, blank informs us about the right and wrong aspects of everything. Number second, blank are the fundamental laws that governs us to make the right use of cyberspace. So try to answer all these questions at your home. And if not possible, I'm going to tell the answer of all these questions in the next session. So if you have any doubt in this session, you can ask me. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much.